Well, I guess we're live here at the wealth around us again. And there's Bandit. And a fan Dito indeed. Oh. He jumps out that mini truck and he just flies top speed. Fast as he can go. I've never seen him run faster. So story time. I was in the high jet the other day, going about 45, I was out and coming. <clears throat> and, uh, <coughs> goodness, air quality is terrible right now. You can see all these, uh, all the pollinators are on the wind, this fluff and stuff. Bandit, come. Good boy. Good boy. So I was out and coming on basically a high, you know, a, a, not a highway, but, um, you know, back road is, you know, four, four lane, pretty big, uh, going pretty, pretty fast. And, uh, something happened to the high jet. It, it was, it started bucking on me. And now when I say bucking, it was at speed and it started going. So I said, Oh God, you know, I pulled right over. It stopped. And I said, huh? And now this is a cautionary tale, and I'll get to the, the meat of it here, but um, I started up again, and uh, I didn't shut it off or anything, but I, I got back on the road, got about halfway down the road, about 20 minutes. Bandit, come! Come! Get out of that puddle. Come! And he wasn't with me at the time, thank God, because this thing started bucking on me. Like, I mean, it was enough to throw me around, and I was like, what is going on here? And I got looking at it, and uh, was like, you know, s something, something more is going on here. So I lifted the seat and had a look at the engine oil. Bandit, boy, come over here. Come over here. Come here. Come on. Sit. Good boy. And uh, I really started worrying about it. I was like, oh, God, I spun a bearing or something, but... um. Uh, a friend of mine said, no, if you spun a bearing in that thing, you would have immediately known it. Like, like you would dang well know it. It would have been like, and, and like you, the, the motor would have shut off or barely ran or if anything. It would have been a lot of knocking, a lot of, there wasn't anything wrong with it. And I thought that was the weirdest thing. And I took it out again the next day and it was like, oh, well, it just cleared itself up. I guess something blew through the carburetor and that turned out to be not it at all. If something blew through the carburetor, it'd be stuck there. And it'd be still going. Sometimes it can blow through. That is true. You, you can be downshifting and stuff and, and sucking, you know, part, particles of stuff through the carburetor. I said, you know, I hope the carburetor's not screwed. And uh, maybe like the, the chokes hung open, you know, pulled the seat up, took the hatch off. Nope, nothing. And you couldn't find out what it was. And I was like, what would that be? Surging engine. So I looked it up online and every other article online just in general about surging engines was like ah you remember to check your fuel filter oh you know every other uncle, uncle mike was out there yeah you know you need to get ahead of your fuel filter you get ahead of your fuel filter you won't have that problem and uh so i was like could it be something i mean as like like it wasn't a catastrophic failure but it was a damn scary event and uh it turned out the high jet was running on its stock fuel filter I'll show you that if we can get it in the light here. You can see <laughs> there's gas in there. There is some bunch of gas or something in there and it doesn't come out. Either way, that is what you call a plugged fuel filter. And it was always running like that. Um, I thought it funny that my high jet uh, would only do like, you know, 50 or so before it started doing this horrible vibration. That's what the vibration was. It was falling flat on its face at high RPM and high speed because of a plugged fuel filter. And as you can see, that sucker on it, man, that's a gnar it's gnarly. I mean, it's misshapen from heat. Bandit, come! 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 Over this way. Not so much that way. This way. Yeah, come on. Come on. Man, it gets a little too big for his britches out here. But yeah, that was the uh, the 
seemingly life-threatening situation was was caused by a uh, fuel filter. Not only that, I replaced a fuel filter and I noticed the lines were bad. Well, that could have potentially been a fire situation. So uh, I did the lines, I got new clamps, got a new fuel filter. Thanks again, Derek at GNR Imports LLC out of, I believe it's Montana. The guys have always taken care of me, taking care of this truck. They get the parts out to me when I ask for them. Couldn't ask for better. Again, that's GNR Imports. And they are the official parts supplier of Mighty Mouse, the mini truck. But yeah, she runs like a scalded dog now. I actually looked down the other day. I said, man, I've never heard those tires scream like that. I looked down, I was doing 68. <laughs> And uh, yeah, she pulls a lot better at low end. She just runs a lot better overall because she's not starved for gas. And uh, another crazy thing I figured out about this truck. Bandit, come. Come. We're working with him at distance. He's being good. He's being real good. But yeah, the... Uh, the high jet was uh, the whole time was uh, running uh, star for fuel and I got working on the fuel system and it turns out there is a fuel pump right about there it doesn't do anything it just gets it's sold it is it's this big it has a little pipe coming from this side and this side and this side and uh, the only job it does is to keep the carburetor fuel bow full uh, that's the only thing it does. It doesn't pull from the tank or nothing. I learned the hard way, like, I live, I die, I live again. Uh, like, like Fury Road, I was up underneath there, basically trapped up underneath it, and I figured out that the uh, fuel system, the way it gets gasoline is gravity-fed. No kidding, like Fury Road. Like, you could pull the line out, next thing you know, you're there's gas pouring all over you. And, uh, yeah. And it's really ingenious, actually. You know, it's just a bunch of right-angle bends and stuff in lines. To get the fuel pressure for that little Makuni carburetor. And it, I mean, it stands to reason because the fuel tank's up here. It's about like yay level. The motor's down there. See it? The uh, motor's up all underneath there. So it's actually gravity fed to the carburetor, and then the uh, fuel pump picks it up. And puts it in the fuel bowl. Oh, and Bandit is rolling in the clover. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's like the happening out here. I think I'll get out of here. But, yeah, this is just a uh, public service announcement for any high jet owners, drivers, drivers of mini trucks. Go over your fuel filter because you might think, oh, my mini truck is slow. And, yeah, they, they, yeah if they're starving for gas, they are. But uh, I had never, I probably picked up 20 horsepower. It's ridiculous. The uh, amount of gas that little fuel filter was not pouring. I mean, look at that. Again, look, you can see it right there. Look at that dirty, could be Japanese gasoline. I'm thinking it's Japanese gasoline, you know, and just, and just the sediment and stuff in gas tanks that accumulates in there over time at any gas station, at any uh, state-of-the-art facility. You, this is what happens when you drive on the road dust accumulates on stuff i've learned that with all this and uh, it's where it's a combination of uh, rubber and soot and a car exhaust petrochemical residues and yeah uh that thing wasn't flowing. oh look i finally got someone to come out i finally got something to come out look at that i had to sit there and wiggle it and shake it and turn it and turn it and turn it um this thing was barely functioning barely doing its job and the tank looks fine and all that but the uh the high jet man it's just running like a champ it's going fast i was driving around i was like it's a ferrari <laughs> I, I can't i can't even imagine how it's going to be uh with with uh that turbo van with uh cooler and, and intercooler and turbo man it's probably going to be a spunky little thing five speed because that's a four speed and i you know new assessment of driving it around it'll keep up with any any modern car it's about half you know actually yeah about it's about half the weight you got about 3,000 pounds on a normal car you should have about 1,500 pounds on a mini truck and given that it's like 50 pounds feet of torque and four gears <clears throat> I think there are 373s in the back I'm not sure or 383 one of the two I don't think it could be a 411 I wouldn't think so it's a tiny little 
pumpkin about yay big but uh yeah with the gear ratios and everything i'm getting about 68 to almost 70 miles an hour now i wouldn't go any f any faster than 70 because it didn't feel like those tires were going to hold up to it i mean they're just golf cart tires after all and i have I, I have another set of them i've got mud paddles and i've got some i've got those old sun apps i may throw those on the turbo wagon but uh with that extra ground clearance in that extra tire ratio you get a couple more miles an hour so i'd say a high jet in good condition like that one is should probably reliably hit 65. not bad not bad moto cheese was saying his was topping out at 50 but he's got a bunch of stuff on his and i don't know if he's done his fuel filter or something like that but yeah it, it can be like a four barrel carburetor modification just change your freaking fuel filter man you don't need to do all those modifications to the motor when i mean when it's not going to get as much fuel as it needs anyway because it's a gravity fed system so you're kind of limited to gravity now gravity's great it don't break it don't run out it don't wear out it don't stall gravity's always there man there's no shortage of gravity anywhere and uh, that kind of stands to reason makes sense to why it uh can get up hills and stuff the way it does it's, it's made for it it's it's gravity fed there's no pump at the back of the tank to slosh out of the fuel and suck air and and stupid stuff like that but uh yeah it couldn't even be more simplistic it, it was like working on a motorcycle up under there the motor i'm sure is a little more involved in a motorcycle but as automotive mechanics go and i've worked on a few cars uh this thing is just like a working on a three-wheeler or something i mean it, it, it's there's nothing to it as you can see i mean like the frame's all there i could actually probably get up underneath here and show you what I mean. Don't get bugs over me. Oh, God. But, yeah, there's really nothing to it. That rear axle just cracks me up. Look how short that thing is. My hand is longer than that axle. Now, there's a couple other axles. There's an axle that runs up front, and it's pretty big and beefy. And the front diff is no joke. But, uh, oh, we're going to get... Washed away to Oz here, so I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video, but yeah. Change your fuel filters for proper performance. This has been a public service announcement. Thanks for watching. Always remember, there's a wealth around you. Stay safe.